Hey guys, so this is a third installment in, I guess you'd call it a video series that I've been doing on this channel called The Battle of the Browsers, where I take a look at two of the most well-known browsers in common use today, uh, Mozilla's Firefox and Google Chrome, and look at the pros and cons of each of them. Now, I gotta admit I didn't expect to do a third video in this series, but I've been using both of them for quite some time now and, and sort of using them in uh, with, with, with sort of comparing them and comparing the features that each one has in mind and I'd like to just sort of close off this series by talking about uh, my conclusive thoughts on which browser is better for which uh, situation and who might benefit one you know from one browser more than the other so I've got here some notes in front of me pros and cons of using each one or more specifically features that each one has so uh, to begin with, uh, because as you guys know, I'm particularly passionate about it, uh, the open source or the licensing issues regarding the browsers. Now, this is probably boring to a lot of people, but I consider it to be particularly important because there is so much potential for infecting your computer with viruses, malware, trojans, you name it online. I think that it's to a degree important that the browser you use have some um, uh, element of it that's open source, some degree of transparency, some reason to trust it for using it to navigate around the internet. Uh, because if you have, uh, if you have to trust a company to keep you safe and trust is all you have, then I, I well, I would rather have some kind of process to to verify that. So um, with Firefox, with Mozilla's Firefox, although it's released under its own special license, it is open. Open sourced. Um, it's open sourced under the you know the Mo Mozilla public license is what it's called, and uh, you can see that many browsers or at least a number of browsers have been built on the base that Mozilla has provided. Uh, one of the more noticeable ones is Tor, uh, the Onion router browser, uh, which is designed for browsing the internet anonymously and with a very high degree of privacy. And if they've decided to use Mozilla's Firefox as their base, then there must be some value in the code there and then. So to switch over to Chrome, uh, where does it uh, come about in regards to uh, how open it is? Well, Chrome have released the source code to the majority of their browser. Uh, it's called Chromium. You can actually get the code for Chromium, compile it yourself, and you have a very, very similar browsing experience to Google Chrome. Chromium is just all of the open source elements of Google Chrome put together in a browser. So Chrome is... Um, open source, but it also adds a few proprietary components on top of it. Uh, for example, it comes with a pre-installed, fully updated version of Adobe Flash, which I think is a very big bonus, especially if you're a Linux user, where it's probably the easiest way to get an up-to-date version of Adobe Flash. But also, when it comes to Windows, Windows users, dealing with Adobe as a company in installing Flash is a bit annoying at times as well. It's constantly asking you to update it, and uh, and and it doesn't run particularly efficiently and I have noticed that it does actually crash from time to time but when Google um, sort of embed their own version of Flash which is an you know it is Adobe's Flash but they make it and they compile it specifically for the Google Chrome browser which of course isn't an open source component it does work particularly well it doesn't bother you to constantly update it it updates it when the Google Chrome browser updates so um, and, and, and a lot of people I know who work in IT who set people's computers up they like Chrome for just this reason Flash is, is, is it's it's an extra thing you have to worry about it's an extra bother and um, and uh, and when you just install Chrome, you just bypass that particular um, just annoyance there and then. So when it comes to the open source side of things, yes, um, you can kind of call Chrome open source. Um, but because the uh, the binary packages that you get off the website have some additional things in them, some of the, so some of them are things like Google Updater and uh, there's a PDF reader. Um, so they're, they're little additional tools that, um, for, for legal reasons, they can't open source. But the majority of the browser itself is open source. So I guess it depends on your personal preference as to whether or not you'd consider it open source enough to browse the internet with, and whether or not you even trust Google as a company. Now, i got to admit, Google has certainly had fewer cock-ups than the majority of other tech companies lately, and it does seem to know very much what it's doing when it comes to security. But that again, Firefox also is a very well-trusted browser for when it comes to privacy as well. Google, although known for their competence, aren't necessarily known for being super top on their privacy. So um, 
It depends as to to what degree do you consent to your information being passed along to Google. I don't mind Google handling my personal information really because I consider that, well, they might not be the best in terms of privacy, but at least at least I believe they're competent enough to manage my personal information in such a way which I don't think it it puts me in danger. But different people have different perspectives on this, and um, that might be one reason or another to use Chrome or Firefox. So, with Firefox, it has a big well. It has a big advantage in the plugin department. Its plugins are better. There's, you can do more with the browser in terms of the technical capabilities of it. I like that in the Mozilla plugin store, uh, it actually gives you the license um, of each of the plugins, so you can e you can immediately tell on the store page whether or not a plugin that you download and use is open source, or whether or not it's proprietary, or whether or not it's, it doesn't have a license whatsoever, and it's just something that someone's cobbled together and just presented to the world. It gives you a pretty good rundown on what to expect in regards to the legality of any of the plugins that you use. And there are a lot more plugins uh, available and th that can do a lot more things. For example, um, uh, the Google Chrome plugin store, they don't allow plugins that effectively they don't want. They don't really like plugins that, for example, download YouTube videos um, because they, they would rather, of course, that you watch YouTube videos on YouTube.com, which is, of course, owned by Google. Whereas Firefox have no such qualms with this. If you want to download a plugin that can download a YouTube video uh, just with the click of a button, uh, Firefox is more than happy to uh, to provide, or at least uh, it, it's more than happy to provide the framework for that. Um, also, in regards to um, the plugins for Chrome, I've noticed that it is substantially more difficult to try and find out a plugin's um, license, whether or not it's open source, whether or not it's closed source, whether or not someone's even bothered to think of the legality of any of the plugins that they decide to upload to the store. And that kind of, you know, again, if I'm going to be installing software onto my computer and in specifically that interacts with the internet in my computer, I want to know whether or not I can trust it. And open source is a massive factor in that. It's not the defining, you know, be all and end all factor, but it is step one. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that when it comes to the plugins, Firefox definitely has um, has definitely won that round. That's not to say that the Google Chrome doesn't have pretty decent plugins, and all the big major ones are available for uh, both browsers. Although that being said, uh, you may even remember a video that I did um, where I talked about NoScript, which is a browser that blocks all JavaScripts and um, various other things from running on a website by default, making your browsing experience not only safer, but also faster as well. And that isn't available on um, Google Chrome. But that being said, that being said, uh, there are some built-in features that Chrome has that Firefox doesn't. Firefox, uh, Firefox, although has the live bookmarks feature, which is something that I use quite a lot, and Chrome doesn't have that, and I've got to admit, I'm half expecting Chrome to implement that at some point, but they don't appear to be doing so now. But um, when it comes to out-of-the-box support, uh, not support, but uh, out-of-the-box features, Chrome has one which is particularly useful and one which really... Uh, which really intrigues me, because if a browser has an, a feature inbuilt, uh, I sort of feel a bit safer using that, because not only is it automatically um, the same license as the browser that you're using, uh, but also it's less likely to crash the browser, because as we all know, the number one cause for browser crashes is uh, our plugins. You know, plugins do crash, br or not automatically crash browsers, but um, if your browser crashes regularly, there is a very high chance that it's a br uh, it's a plugin or a combination of plugins that are causing those crashes. So if yeah, so if there's a feature that's inbuilt and I don't have to use a plugin to to acquire that feature, then I'm certainly interested. And the way how Chrome handles cookies and scripts and plugins uh, out of the box is something which I'm particularly intrigued by because it allows you to block cookies, scripts, and plugins um, until specifically activated at your discretion by going in through the settings and the advanced settings and the um, the content options, which is it's kind of similar to no script, except that it also covers cookies as well. Um, and both of both of them uh, cover uh, plugins, uh, which is particularly interesting. Um, and um, even though no script has more features, um, it's nice to know that, that Google Chrome has some features in that department and features that personally I would be happy using. Like that's that's enough for me. And it's also easier and straightforward to use because it has fewer options. So that being said, 
Um, the out of the box security when it comes to uh, plugin, uh, when it comes to managing scripts and cookies, I wasn't expecting Chrome to actually have the edge on this. Um, but then again, Firefox can can catch up just by using uh, plugins, and that's the benefit of having um, such a fantastic plugin library and, and, and such a great working API. So, uh, one thing that I have noticed uh, is the Chrome is a little bit more stable than Firefox. Now, I know that some of you guys in the comments have said that there's basically, they both crash the same amount of times or whatever. But um, I have noticed that Chrome does actually crash a little bit more. But no, no, no Chrome actually crashes a little bit less, I'm, so I'm, I'm afraid. But um, the thing is about uh, Chrome is that each of the tabs is sandboxed. So if you load a website which has uh, a dodgy script on it or a really, you know, it has too many plugins or whatever and it and it hangs it only hangs that one tab in chrome whereas with firefox it hangs the entire browser and that's a real pro well that's a real that's, that's a real annoyance now in the uh in the case of firefox it will automatically restore the tabs that you were had originally open so it's not the end of the world but it is nice that chrome sandboxes each of the t each of the tabs so that if one of the websites you're visiting is just really badly made buggy or whatever it doesn't hang your whole browser it just hangs that one tab and i think that it would be amazing if firefox could do that um but unfortunately i've, I've looked around as much as i can and it, and it, and it can't um, and that's that's a real problem the downside to that is that uh, having each tab being sandbox requires a lot more memory but uh we live in an age now where memory isn't particularly expensive either uh, so it would be nice uh, if Firefox could introduce that feature, but I, I, I don't see it on the horizon uh, anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, so there is also one other thing as well. Um, this is likely to change in a couple of um, uh, a couple of new iterations of Firefox, uh, but Chrome does come with. Uh, media source extensions which allow you to um, watch the html5 video that comes with um, digital rights management drm which is a somewhat controversial um, implementation that the w3c have done where they um, allowed drm to be used in html based websites without having to use any kind of third party add-ons like for example adobe flash now I've been talking about this with a with a with a number of people, uh, many of whom are developers, uh, Linux developers, in fact, and they actually say that allowing DRM within HTML5 is a really really good thing because HTML5 is an open source platform, so it's another thing that the open source platform can provide. But also it means that we can start seeing DRM available or DRM type tools more available on Linux as well because of its its open nature. Whereas we won't be having to, to mess around with uh, with Adobe Flash or Microsoft Silverlight, I think it's called as well. That's another example of, of something that uses a lot of DRM. And when it can be more sort of universally used, when there's like a universal standard for DRM, then it means that, um, that it's available to more people and on more platforms as well. And also available, of course, when I say Linux, I, I'm also um, talking about uh, Android as well because Android doesn't natively support Flash either. Okay, so there is actually another thing as well that um, uh, that I think Firefox very much has the edge over Chrome on, and that's that Firefox's um, mobile port is significantly better than Chrome. Chrome, and I don't know why this is, because Chrome uh, just really provides you with a, what is essentially a bog standard browser. There are barely any mobile plugins, or there are barely any plugins for the mobile browser, um, and it just seems to be like your 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 bare bones browser when it comes to chrome and that's all you seem you can, you can be able to do with it you don't seem to be do, able to do anything else with it it just seems to be a brown here, here's your browser it might as well be any other browser it might as you know it might as well be you know microsoft internet explorer for all it's worth um but um but it's just you know it's just it doesn't you know it, there's nothing special you can say about it yeah you can open up tabs or whatever but that's all that's all you got whereas with firefox you can um uh, you've got significantly more, you know, uh, more plugins, basically. You've got a lot more plugins, and a lot of the plugins that are available on the desktop version of Firefox are also available on the mobile port of Firefox as well. Now, at this point, it's worth noting that both of them sync up your bookmarks and your plugins as well using their um, 
e each of their sync functions. Uh, Firefox is called uh, Firefox Sync. Chrome just says log into to Google uh, through your browser, but it effectively me makes sure that your, your bookmarks are saved so that you can use them on any other devices as well. Uh, when it comes to Chrome, you can as well have um, profiles are built in out, and they work out of the box as well. So profiles, in case you didn't know how they work, is if you've got multiple people using a browser or if you've got a browser where you have to log into multiple, say, YouTube accounts at the same time um, or it's, it's useful to, ha to log into multiple accounts on the same service at the same time, what you can do is you can run two specific instances of Google Chrome. Uh, it's almost effectively like, like you've got two two completely instances of Google Chrome, uh, or three or four, and you can have as many of these as you want. And each of these instances can log into each of their separate Google accounts as well. And that is particularly useful, particularly if you're um, using uh, a computer shared by other people, um, but also if you just are the kind of person that has multiple accounts. As you guys know, I have multiple uh, YouTube accounts. So if I'm uploading uh, two videos to two separate accounts, I can just have two instances of uh, two or three instances of, of um, Google Chrome up and running, and I can be uploading two videos at the same time because uh, Lord knows I've got the bandwidth for it. So um, there is the option to do that in Firefox, um, but you do, again, have to fill that void using plugins. Now, the plugins are actually pretty good, and actually the plugins themselves really just interface with what is an existing function beneath the Firefox framework. So Firefox do have profiles and you don't necessarily need a plugin to access them if you're willing to get into the command line um, but you do need um, a plugin if you just want something to quick and easily switch from one to the other or have two open at the same time um, and again because you can have plugins to fill that particular uh, need um, there are more options but then again that kind of also complicates things so when it comes to things like plugins when it comes to comes to like the the security in regards to uh, scripts the security in regards to cookies um, you know the profiles um, Chrome does have more out of the box functionality on the desktop version whereas Firefox does require more plugins just to just to get up to par with um, Google Chrome but once Firefox has caught up with plugins I got to admit there's very little difference in there uh, and, and a lot of it depends on how you use your browser as to which one you might prefer. Uh, I know many of you in the comment section of previous videos in this series uh, say that you enjoy using both and of course I use both um, but um, and I gotta say I've got mixed feelings I've got mixed feelings about both of them um, one is that Chrome having an up-to-date version of Flash is really really useful for things like streaming on Twitch Twitch still uses Flash although they are getting rid of it and I will be surprised if we see Flash uh, sort of around in um, a couple of years time Flash is dying out um, and it's just a matter of time before it gets replaced by its HTML5 components um, and it will do over time. So that so the 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 fact that GNOME uh, not GNOME Chrome has um, Flash built into it effectively is becoming less and less relevant by the day because Twitch is is going to eventually move from having um, uh, an Adobe Flash based uh, streaming service to a uh, to a a, a um, to an to an HTML5 one. So um, to end on. Chrome does ship with something that Firefox doesn't. Of course, it's the DRM media source extension. And that's going to present a problem with Firefox up until the point when it does actually begin to, um, to, 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 to implement it. And they do say that they are going to implement it in a few editions time. Uh, they're going to... Um, give you the option to not implement it because there are going to be a number of people who use Firefox which are, are going to be vehemently against the DRM principles. I can understand that and I like that Firefox gives you the choice. Again, that's the benefit of open source pretty much through and through is that it gives people or more, you know, in, in, a, in a large number of cases, it gives people more choice, uh, which, uh, and, and, uh, which I think is, is fantastic. So, that uh, ended up being significantly more technical than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I guess um, for those people who aren't particularly technically minded, um, uh, would they be happy using one or the other? I guess some of the more advanced features like profile uh, management and, um, and and plugins and that kind of thing are probably going to really appeal more to the technically minded. And I guess if, if you aren't particularly technically minded, I think Chrome might be the better option, particularly when it comes to the implementation of Adobe Flash and the implementation of the DRM HTML5 features, like, for example, media source extensions. But then again, of course, uh, Mozilla, Firefox, again, when, you know, once it's finally caught up with the... the um, uh, with the media source extensions 
uh, again, it's going to be on a par. There's very little in it. To me, it basically comes down between um, plugins versus um, the sort of the more the more sort of polish and out of the box features that Chrome has, because I think that Chrome does feel a little little bit more polished, um, which is a shame because that really kind of personally for me it divides me quite um, quite quite sort of heavily. I like I feel that divide a lot because I do need Flash because of course I do quite a lot of live streaming, but then again. I do like the plugins that, uh, that Firefox offers, and I am a massive, massive open source uh, software advocate. So that's just a few thoughts. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And unless there's anything that sort of comes up or, or, or a significant amount of time has passed where um, this information no longer becomes relevant, I'm going to probably not really talk about comparing the two browsers anymore. I wasn't actually going to do this video, but I did want to sort of close on it as well, uh, considering that now that I've been using both browsers side by side for, for quite... Uh, um, quite a long amount of time now. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.